about that seems right Grab and hide that strap there Trying to get a shape that I like. I think something like that works pretty nice. So I should be way over there. a little bit more round yeah I think that looks pretty okay now I actually think we're just having this second round thing that looks detailed enough for this stage so I'm not gonna go in my and model it I'll do it later get some focus on the actual helmet itself so I'm definitely gonna apply the thickness and simplify to get those lines in now let's try putting this actual actually closed and just can see how that's gonna look Got a little stubborn area. Just polish that out. Let's be sure that we take the color first. I do think I'm just gonna close it. I'm still not 100% sure. Hmm. Let's try putting this in the position. We can use the band curve for this type of thing as well gonna be a little weird because the points are not exactly straight it's okay so actually this quite bad placement should be like here you can see I'm trying to fight those misaligned points And be sure to create a safe sometimes. It's doing quite a shitty job of remeshing. I hate it when it does that so much. Uh, 
Then we got rid of that helmet collar. Something like this. And then here it's becoming quite loose actually. I think we can take it and rotate it. Yeah, I do think this looks a bit sleek and then I think the, the thing open. This shouldn't be that close to the skin. I wish the zero mesh could keep the poly paint. I think it's really annoying to have to keep coming back and changing that. Just gonna duplicate this. And for this one, I'm gonna go ba way back in history. So we'll get like a, a hanging strap again. And we can just place the one here. You always want to keep thinking about how you can block out the fastest, right? Be a way to like let's say an extract and do thickness and put it all in again. We can just duplicate it and take it. So we can go with this. This. Mm. I do like this one more. And then we can also see a little bit of interior of the helmet, which is gonna give a nice breakup. So let's keep like this. But it's good to kind of experience, right? Because maybe it did look better once we added all that, but no. I'm just gonna keep it like that. I do like that strap there though. That's not that's a lot of emptiness there. But I think it's worth the trade-off of seeing some of that interior, which is gonna give a cool breakup once we texture. get this little piece in there so duplicates so something like that Be sure that these are not exactly symmetrical. Also, gonna need to break like the symmetry here later too. I'll do it now, just a little bit. It's gonna add a lot. I still think those glasses might be a bit too high. I know the like that in the reference that they sit quite high, but I do want to have the eyes to be centered. I think this is just kind of weird to have it like this. So what we can do is we can just take the goggles, transpose, put like a pivot, and then go to this one. We 
go to a different one. You can kind of see how that sits. So I think that's a lot more normal, right? Hide that mask. So that feels a bit more natural to have to get glasses going there. Get a mask back. And hide the goggles now. Because this one should be like close on top of the skin. And then the goggles can go over it. Just gonna push this all up. Go ahead and add this rope. And again, I, I really don't like working with curved brushes. Just gonna, I don't know why I keep duplicating. <laughs> so I'm gonna make an append. Gonna do a, go with a sphere lender. Just gonna scale that way down. Oops. I think we can put this one on the straps as well. Yeah, let's, uh, let's put it on the own folder. Get this one, put in mask. If this one, new folder and put this one in ropes. This one should be a bit more yellowish. So this one should hook onto like a little hook there. Then go lower than those straps. And it should be going in here. You can see how this is just nicer to work with than an actual curved brush. Because it's easier to adjust. Let's dynamish. And looks really messy, but I think it's okay. So now we can do that on the same. Now if we inflate it. And if you've seen auto save, I like to just save. You should get like a reminder to do a save. Now we get that noise for free from the Dynamesh. We can go here and inflate some places. I'm just tapping my pen. So I think that's a good block out. We do need some more space here to, to make this little hook thing go in. Gonna disable the poly paint for a bit. I think you can tell how much difficult, how much more difficult it is to tell the design 
without actual colors. But this does help like seeing uh, like little errors. As you can see, I didn't really see that with black, but with uh, with the uh, poly paints, more clear to see. But we're gonna be working more without the uh, poly paint once we actually get to refining our block out. Maybe push this all down. I can match that jawline a bit while keeping space for that thing to go in. And I'm just gonna give some space to the skin, I think. some other pieces for now I'm not sure what I want to do with shape here so I think I'm just gonna go here and apply. Actually, let's first make sure that we have had a nice topology. I'm gonna apply this. I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time designing those cuts. Again, I'm looking at more reference on my other screen. We should be starting with like a nice big one there. Don't worry about being clean. Just put it in and then we do it cleanly later. It's almost like sketching. That's too far. Actually, let's just go ahead and make a morph target. That way it's going to be really easy to erase those lines if we want. I think that's like nice how that follows. It's gonna it's not gonna be a panel line. It's gonna be like a line for stitches. Let's get rid of those straps. As you can see, the distance is not really equal here. Just going to go to my morph and push morph. Just morph that out. Then we can redo that. 
We can also kind of move that in place. And actually we, we need more space there. And I'm just looking at the reference. So again, just moving it in place with the move brush. Still mess around with this one. And I'm not sure yet if we're gonna sculpt this piece or if we're gonna simulate it in Marvelous. I will decide later on. But even if you're gonna like simulate something in Marvelous, it's still nice to get the block out done in ZBrush. So you know how you want it to look like. Because blocking out in Marvelous, it's more difficult. Like getting all those stitch lines parallel to each other will be a living hell and marvelous. Now you could do like a, a quick topology and make sure that your UV seams are on here. Then you can just unwrap it and then you can use that unwrap to guide your patterns. I'm just kind of looking at this one now. And maybe I'll follow this paneling where we have like one panel there instead of two. Not sure yet. I do like this shapening here. start getting a little bit of faults in here I'm not really thinking about how it looks like just going in and putting some in right I'm not breaking that symmetry yet so that looks a little bit better Yeah, and this should actually be one panel. So one thing, if we now use the morph brush, it's going to morph all those folds as well. So what we can do is we can, I think it's the plane. And just hold Alt, yeah. You can just go back and fill those spaces up. This doesn't need to be perfect, but I just want to get some volume in there. to go to brushes smooth and smooth stronger this is just literally like the name says it does uh, it smooths the mesh but more strongly That's how you can get like rid of that kind of stuff. And I hate putting the lines in the middle with symmetry. Just holding down shift to get that little snap. And those are all kind of 
misplaced, I think. Actually, we have one, two, and then we have three. So we have one, two. Hmm. This one should be smoothed out. I do think I like it more with it, so I'm just gonna keep it in for now. That's just kind of where we we can kind of decide what we do, all right? Because if we put one stitch line less or more, it's not gonna break the functionality or anything. So now we can have some fun with the design, which is always fun to do. I think I'm just gonna put one more panel. So I'm just trying to make those panels parallel to each other. So then this one we have to kind of do like that. I think it looks nice uh, like uh, the reference we have a little bit of empty space here just gonna create for a bit of a rest and since we had this hidden when we moved it then move Let's just replace that it's starting to look a little bit better already so I'm just gonna go ahead and test this out so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this a test on how it sounds So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna break the symmetry a little bit. Just to put some unsymmetrical folds in. That's all stuff we will do into more detail later. For now I just want to have a little bit of a break in that symmetry. It doesn't really matter how the folds look by now. Just to push it a little bit the ladder. And I think it's time we push the, the side thingies a little bit further. So we just have a basic shape here now. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my So we're gonna grab this block out. Let's apply the thickness. Just gonna export it. I can just grab one of these and delete the other one. I'm just gonna center that in the middle of a scene. And now X to snap. Just gonna try to make that as much in the middle as possible. Now we can actually make a nice straight cylinder here. Should I put on 24? You can see it's a little bit uh, with a baffle. This needs to be a little bit smaller here. It's a little bit bigger. Just gonna hide 
this one. We cannot see exactly everything that is going on. But it doesn't really matter, we can see the important parts. So what we can see is there should be like a, a little dip there. this and just make it smaller control e to extrude and just scale that down it should be like rounded let's keep a straight edge going on there this should be way deeper like a little extrusion there at the end make it a little bit smaller and let's put that in maybe a bit bigger actually now we just extract this going in so we can connect this like a 50 and I'm holding down shift to get like the snapping on this it's also gonna clean up our uh, topology a little bit which is nice need to be perfect now just to make that topology more clean I'm gonna add that edge here just connect that now we can fill it all up Again, we can really see what's happening here, so we just have to guess. Let's move this out a little bit. I think like that looks okay. Don't be sure that that's right on each other go to component and now we can just scale it down actually let's just do it here Can take this in ZBrush and import this over. Sometimes the scaling messes up, then you just gotta delete, append, now import it. Now you can see that's the right skill. Just gonna move that in place. Kind of see how that looks. I 
And I think this should still be a little bit thicker. But besides that looks all right. Just deleting that edge and putting it back again to make it more straight. We can do edge, just kind of move that in place while we don't mess up the shape, the straightness. I'm gonna put an extra edge here, say 70. The same here, 30. Now we can connect that. This is just gonna make a topology a little bit nicer. Let's put in this, um, actually let's do the baffling now. We can just take these, these are gonna be really hard baffles. Gonna turn the chamfer off. Let's keep that on. I think that looks all right. I think for this one, we could keep it off, maybe. Looks should be a little bit smaller. Again, remember anything that we do here doesn't need to be perfect. Just trying to get some detail in, that's all basically. Like nobody's gonna notice if you don't exactly match the baffles of the reference. So you don't wanna be spending too much time trying to get it just right, because it doesn't really matter. Spend that time on something else better. We should have baffled this a little bit early, but alright, I think. I think we can get away with it. Take all those. We also should have baffled that earlier. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Because we're gonna dynamesh this. So we can smooth out any errors that we have in with the topology. Baffle that. Alright. 
something forgot to be beveled there. And let's make sure to select that edge and bevel. I just want to add a little bit more detail to that final edge. The bevel should have been bigger. Take the third, uh, actually the edge. With slide, we can just move that baffle out a bit. as long as it smooths out well and it's okay now you can see we're starting to get like a detail there I'm just gonna take this I'm gonna do one final level that should do it I think yeah, so now you can see we have a nice sharp detail there I do think it's a little bit too sharp let's take that chamfer off Let's keep it like that and add like a little circle or we can do that in reverse. Let's do it in Maya. We can just uh, let me see where this vertex uh, chamfer. It's gonna give us a little circle that looks about right. I'm gonna delete that, extrude it, and collapse. So now we have a topology back. connect all this and I can do a re-edit that just, up, just scale that in a little bit to get a more rounded effect now I'm gonna baffle that I can see we have like a nice little circle there then we need to do the same for the for the bolts here so let's divide that We can take these points, we can chamfer the vertex. Actually, first let's do a bevel and segments. So it's a little bit more square like. Now we chamfer. Just want to merge that so those points are connected. this, this and merge vertex, I can see that together, I just connect them, make sure you put that 50, Take those, go to edge surface and just slide it out a little bit. I 
Now we're just gonna move the points until we get like a nice rounded shape. Try to get this as rounded as you can. That's pretty chicken. Now we can take those and just extrude it in. And let's also scale that down a little bit. Let's connect those edges up again. <coughs> then control to edges to edge parameter. Now we can baffle that. As you can see, it has like a baffle on the baffle. Now we repeat that last step for the outer mount. Just bevel that again. Then we can put an edge here. And select that to vertex. X is normal. Just gonna inflate it out a little bit so we get a little bit of a roundness to it. Now if you see that it isn't like a, a nice looking shape, it's not too round, you can just go here, you can take that, you could move that a little bit. Be sure that you go out of the normal selection. Let's go out of slight. We can also move this a little bit more on ZBrush, which will be a little bit easier. I think that's looking okay. Let's give a little bit more depth to this one. I'm gonna grow that selection to make sure that I'm moving the bevel as well. Added that touch flow. And let's export. Now import it into ZBrush again. Place it. I can kind of see if I like how everything looks. I think that looks pretty good. Does need to be a little bit more big though. So let's start putting in the bolts. So this one's really easy. We just create a cylinder. Rotate it. Just put it here. Make sure it's going in a little bit. I just select that edge and bevel it. Choose how thick you want that to be. Once 
we got the thickness down. Gonna put on the wireframe so we can kind of see it. And that looks all right. And take this, delete it, and extrude it. I'm gonna put an edge here. I'm gonna delete this. Just bridge it. And now here we connect it. Fill and connect again. Now you can see we have a really basic screw or bolt, however you call it. Now we can do some smoothing. Just put an angle. Now oh, that that's all smooth and nice can do a hard edge selection and if you don't have a script for this you should have one you can copy mine or just google and we go edge just baffle that now you can see we have a screw before I actually do that I also want to make sure if you baffle stuff, since we're gonna bake it down. If you see it from this, you can see that it won't get as much detail. Now it just looks like a, a flat thing. And as soon as we bake that, it's gonna look more flat. So you want to be sure that you have some depth before you do stuff like this. Now we can do that again. Baffle. Now you can see we have some nice depth to bake. Make sure to move this in. We can just hold down V to snap it to that point. That's in the middle. Let's duplicate it. Do the same here. Be sure that you have like different rotation on the two of them. I think that looks pretty good. Do you think we can make the bevel a little bit sharper? nice and sharp I want to increase this one so select the vert grow the selection and just grow oops need one more grow just grow that That's a little bit too big. Something like that looks nice to me. Just select all, do a group, duplicate. I'm gonna hide this. Smooth this once and convert it. Same as smooth it once and convert and smooth it once. This is just gonna make sure that we don't have any angles and all that stuff. Export. 
import and import. As you can see, now we don't get an error of uh, handguns. I did forget to make it a little bit bigger. Just take this and move that out a little bit. Then just move this one. And actually we should have like, uh, we have this edge, but it should be like a little incline and then another one so it can hold the ladder. I'm just gonna, can we do that here? Yeah, I guess we can just do that here. We take this one, just extrude it. Give it some space where it's gonna be resting on the ladder. This is pretty much gonna be hidden, but it's nice to have it to, to kind of guide yourself. So it doesn't really matter how it looks. Just putting it in, because I think it will be a little bit easier to have it. Smooth this out one more time. Now you can see we have a little thing for the ladder. That's looking nice and clean. So we can stop. Placing it. Gonna go ahead and hide straps for now. It's a little bit too big. Just scale it down. I think that looks pretty nice. And I'll call this back. I think that looks pretty well. Don't really need this anymore.
I think the silhouette looks a little bit nice if we angle them a bit. It's gonna make a little bit more space for the strap. how we want this strap to go. We'll just move it maybe like this. That looks strange. So I'm looking at Looking at this picture, it's just like a strap. This thing can be moved higher. This thing seems to be even a little bit lower. And the goggles actually sh seem to be more upwards to make space for the strap. I want to avoid doing that because I don't really like how that looks. I think I'll just place the strap higher. This is just kind of making a design decision on what you think looks the best for the strap. Keep polishing that, keep it nice and smooth. Maybe you can get away with moving this down a little bit. One of the easiest things would be to just move this all up a little bit. Instead of doing the whole goggles, we just move the, the thing here up. What it connects to. So I want to go ahead and make this one a little bit thicker. I think it looks a little strange because it's so skewed. Maybe we can just move this down. Then we do like a full thing here. But we don't really have the topology to support that yet. Will be like this. bit more of a nice straight line. Yeah, I think that looks better. So again, it will be a little bit more visible once we have some more topology so we can actually support it. Right now we're just kind of hinting at it. 
which is fine. Go ahead and make like a little plate here for some extra detail. You can see we can do a lot with these things. I think I'll follow this one where we have a little golden plate inside. Go back to Maya. Just gonna create a cube. Like this. Again, I always like to just delete everything and get a plane. thin of course and remember we're making a game asset so we're gonna break it down so it should give a little bit of thickness by baffle because once again now it just looks like flat plane once we do this we actually get some nice baffled corners which is gonna break down really well yeah that's the one for this just a little bit more actually I don't want the bevel to be too small because then the normal map won't pick it up with the pixel density again you gotta think about all these kind of things when you're making the model about how it's gonna break down it's a little bit too deep Let's go ahead and round that out. spend too much time on this just like a small thingy which you don't really see so you can just quickly put some geometry in and call the day Bevel these two to give it more strength. I think that's okay. We have too much depth. Again, grow it out till the last bevel. Like that. 
thin it out all together. We have too much defined now. And let's go ahead and merge that all up. So we can to unbevel you just delete that one and then you go merge collapse and collapse edge. Hit G to repeat. I think I'll collapse this as well. But that looks a little bit better. Now for the hot part, I want to capture that circle that's coming through. steps back to simplify your mesh Now with all that, go ahead and take this and just that topology. So just eventually make it smooth a little bit better. I'm gonna add one more edge. I think we captured that pretty nicely. I want to capture that baffle. Actually, we can do that later. Should actually not be matching anything. That line we should put in the middle. Once we baffle it, it will align itself. <clears throat> so now that we have all that in, just go ahead and connect it here as well. before we do the thickness. I'm 
go ahead and take this. I'm gonna move this in a bit. Again, get some bevel in there. take all this actually we can just take this and move it out let's align it just extrude it in and one more time and merge it's gonna be a little bit cleaner and we're gonna have to start adding some baffles early so let's add it back now you can see we have that little metal plate and matches the the ring that we have in the in the line let's uh, export this all again First, let's move it and export. We should have done that plate earlier. Fill the object, then black for this one. We also need to add some text to this. I'm gonna do that in Substance Painter because it will be just easier to do it that way. It's important to know what you should do in ZBrush and what's easier to just do in the textures and not bake down. I think the next step is to add some details to the to like the button here of the gas mask. Since we detail this, we are gonna do this one now. If we take a closer look, we have two parts where this exists of like a rubber band and then the metal. So we're gonna use this again as our reference. Let's apply and this one as well. Go ahead and merge and just export. So we can get rid of all of that.
Like, before we're gonna start with a cylinder. Let's put that to 24. Gonna be a metal piece. So, if we take a look at it, it looks uh, pretty difficult initially to model, but we can break it up and it will become really simple. So we're going to start with the baffle that we're seeing. Then we have a little bit of space. Then it extends out with another baffle. We have a bit of space. And we have like that baffle thing. This should be like this. And here we have it. Pointing out more. Just take this and screw it. Now we just baffle these. That's pretty much all there is to it. Just this one. I don't think we can still adjust that. Nope. So what we can do is we can get rid of that baffle. I think that looks about right. Uh, actually, something more like that, maybe. I think we gotta go back to two seconds. Like that, that's all right. Let's just baffle this as well. So here we have a metal piece. Let's just duplicate this. Invert and delete. Normal and just inflate that a little bit. Don't need this anymore. Something like this, maybe. Maybe a bit more. Why it's being weird. That's not a good sign. So let's just delete it. Just check here. Most of times when something is moving really weird, it means that it has like a double edge or whatever. 
it's best to just delete it and quickly redo it to save you a lot of headache in the future if something was wrong. Round it out a little bit. And I do feel like, yeah, we can see the end of the rubber at the back. So we do gotta be careful with that. And export everything. Take a look how it's looking so far. So again, if it imports wrong, delete it. Then now it should import fan. this hmm. maybe we can make it a little bit smaller move it that we keep it in the zero Should end. So we can go to C Mobler, just insert a loop. Now let's export again. That's just gonna tell me how big it should be, so we can delete that. to this so we can extrude it in but that's ruining the it's losing the other shell which is annoying just gonna export it and do it in ZBrush Finally, let's just add a baffle to that. We can 
play a little bit with the material to get a better visualization. Just want to get some break up. Now we need to add these little parts. So let's begin with the easiest, just like a brown little thing there. There we have our first piece. And thickness is alright. Let's add this little thing here in the middle. so we can just connect that and we can baffle it just want to make sure it's symmetrical just a fraction and we can extrude it just like that now we need to get that curvature from here for here I think this one can be 0 0.18 0 0.2 then we got two last little bumps so we can repeat that connect baffle I'm saving this because I want to keep this so I can use it for my low poly. Uh, yeah, let's keep it for a low poly. I'm also going to add this little hook already. Just duplicate. Should build this a little bit. for this thing just gonna delete all and by duplicating it I just make sure that we have the same thickness it's just easier and faster than creating a new cube can move this out a bit Now we've got that uh, round effect, we can the triangle, connect that triangle. Just fill this out. And delete. This should have some 
Gracias. If it's still symmetrical, I just want to be sure. So it is. Actually, gonna export this. So we get an edge in the middle there. Just gonna connect that. Another export. to do it with a cube. tries less and we can just try doing polygon sphere them like this instead of all going to the center it's always going to be cheap on polygons so that's something to keep in mind and we can do like this for that's just something uh, to already kind of look at like how you want to build that low poly because you want to keep thinking about what you're doing so now that now that I want to have eight sides for the high I want to be sure that I work in multiples of eight so we can say 16 or 32 just gonna use 16 actually let's just use 32 there we can keep that eight, actually four. Let's keep that eight. Now let's sixty. So we get nice and even cubes. I think I'll just make the high for now. I'll do the low poly later. It's planned to do it now, but it doesn't really matter when we do it. Yeah, actually, let's do it now since we need to duplicate it. So we can call these uh, things. Uh, 
default we call this high duplicate it and in the high and bevel this I'm gonna just do one smoothing after that Call this one low. You should have like a, a script so you can select every other edge. Maybe I'll keep it a little bit more high poly. You only have two left though. Now let's do the UVs really quickly. Play the map. And do another mapping. Now we can just smooth it all out. Now we have some UVs. Call this uh, upper duplicate this and call this lower. Now we can hide the low poly. Do the same here, hide that low poly. Actually, here, yeah, let's keep it for now. Let's move this down. Now you can see why we already did the low poly and the UVs. So we just have to do it once instead of repeating that. Hide the height, make sure the low is totally in it. The same here. You can see it's not all the way in. Just like that, now we have it right. So you can hide the lows and hide the highs. So now that we have those high and lows in place, let's continue to, to do the same for this, making a high and a low. See this is like a little scoop as well. Kind of get the height moving this in.
get rid of that thing. That's better. You can choose to add baffles or hard edges for the shading. Or we could keep it like this actually. Yeah, I think that works fine. Maybe I want to keep that one thing there though. Yeah, I want to keep that. So this one's done, this one's done. Actually for the final look, we should merge those together. Go ahead and group this all together. Can make some space there. Let's duplicate this, group this and call this base for low poly. Do the same here. Adjust that a little bit. Get rid of this. that we skill the base with that. I'm just looking for a better distance between the, the spheres, give it a little bit of space. Let's get in Z brush, take a quick look. I think it's still too too small. Should be more white and bigger. So we can just take everything here. I just skill that up a bit. Like that. I want to lighten those bolts. Instead, I just want to make them bigger. Ah, I want to miss 
connection. Get rid of the base if you can, just to redo it later. It's kinda annoying, but... Okay. Let's increase that size. Let's try that again. So we should add a little bit of a dent here. Just gonna add an extra edge. Just move that down. Just gonna get that effect. This should be close to the edge. Let's go ahead and make uh, this little piece here. Always just starting with a plane. Rotate that. So this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. Because we cannot just model it flat. Scaling that up and down to straighten that out. I just added that edge flow. Clean that 
Onu da şey atmalıydı be. Lastly, let's go. I'm just going to put that forward a bit. And here we have that thingy. And this should be a little bit thicker than the rest of it, though. That now smooths out really nicely. Put chamfer off. So let's keep that. Let's duplicate first. Bevel put that fraction all the way down. We can use this as a base for the low. This will be our high. 